Welcome to Men in Aprons, our Thanksgiving edition. Today we're going to be showing you everything you need to know about turkey and uh, some other uh, interesting tips and pointers. Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. Plenty of food traditions and you get together with family. And with us today as part of the Beverly Hospital family, we have Lisa Driscoll from the Lifestyle Management Institute. Lisa, can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure, Pete. What we have at the Lifestyle Management Institute is a variety of clinics and we have educational programs that tie in. So medical nutrition therapy, weight management, and in those educational classes, we provide healthy eating tips and healthy eating recipes, all to get people healthier. Oh, that's great, because today we're gonna to be doing some healthy recipes. Uh, we're gonna start with uh, learning how to brine a turkey. And we're also going to make a uh, healthier stuffing today. Yeah, the stuffing itself, it's gonna be made with whole grain bread, a little sauteed onion, it's gonna be fantastic. Lisa, have you ever brined a turkey before? That's actually my husband's job at Thanksgiving. He's brined the turkey twice and both years in a row. It's been a fantastic outcome. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean out the inside of the turkey. What you need to do is take, uh, some of them have a little plastic thing on it, some of them are tied. So you take that off, we'll discard that in there for now. Uh, out of the way for you. Thank you. And coming around inside of it, you're going to see the innards. Uh, some people like to make giblet gravy out of these. I tend to just throw them away. So put those in there for now. And then also on some turkeys, you'll find this little uh, timer plug. This you'll also want to remove. Uh, I wouldn't trust a little piece of plastic uh, with my food safety. Do you cook with a thermometer in the turkey or test after it's done? You're gonna wanna test uh, as you're going through. You wanna go about 15 to 20 minutes per pound and check it uh, with your thermometer. You're gonna wanna put it right in the middle of the breast or right on the uh, leg bone over there. So let's get to brining. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add about a cup of brown sugar. You'll also want to add a little bit of salt, about a half a cup to a cup. Uh, you want to keep the salinity down a little bit. Uh, it is a healthier recipe we're trying to do. You're going to want to put a little bit of water inside just to mix that up a little bit. So you're going to want to mix that a little bit. Get that to dissolve a little bit and you'll be fine. Now how far ahead do you brine the turkey? You're going to want to brine it at least a day, no more than three days. Uh, I prefer to do it too. It puts you right where you want to be. Uh, you're going to want to keep it under refrigeration at all times. Don't just put it in the salt water and leave it out overnight and hope for the best because uh, the best will not happen. So what's going on right now is you have a, a salt solution and, and sugar also works the same way is it actually extracts uh, the juices uh, from the turkey in the first half of the process uh, but then in the second half of the process all those juices now then go back into the turkeys. And it also does help keep the turkey tender and keep it from drying out especially with the uh, longer cooking of the larger birds. Right, exactly. Now during this two day process of brining, do you have to stir? You do mix? not have to stir at all. Uh, just let it sit and rest and let all the uh, chemical components change naturally. Well, so all right, now that we're done, we're gonna cover this, uh, place it in the refrigerator for a day or two, uh, preferably two days if you can, but at least one to get it to go. What we're gonna do now is prepare our pan and get it ready for the oven, get it ready to get the turkey in there. My preference and is to use a mixture of vegetables of carrot, celery, and onion. We call that marapois. That goes right in the bottom of the pan. Uh, that actually imparts the vegetable flavors into the juices if you're gonna make a gravy with it after. Well, that's a little more healthy than the two slices of toast I put down in my pan. Right? <laughs> so I'm just gonna grab a couple of carrots here. You don't have to peel them, right? And just uh, slice them up, rough chop. Now, does this get discarded after the turkey's completed cooking? Uh, yeah, well, again, if you're going to use it for your gravy, you're going to uh, kind of strain it out and, and, and use it in the deglazing process. So, again, it doesn't have to be the fanciest chop or it can all go right in there unpeeled. Almost like making a stock for soup. Exactly. They will be discarded, but they do serve a, a big purpose in the flavor aspect. Now, do you use any type of olive oil or any moisture in there? Uh, no, just the, the natural, the skin's going to uh, render off its own fat from the turkey, uh, so that'll help out. Plus, with the brining, there is a little bit of extra moisture in the turkey, so that's also gonna release out into the pan as well. I remember growing up, my mom would always put 
water in the bottom of the pan and she'd be basting it every now and then. So with the brining, you don't need that? You still should baste the turkey. Okay. Uh, even with the brine, you're still gonna wanna do that a little bit, uh, just tr through tradition, and it also crisps up the skin a little bit more and adds to the flavor. All right, so now we got a healthy amount of vegetables down in the bottom of the pan, right? Just a, a nice single layer. Now it's time to take the turkey out. A couple other things I like to do to get the bird ready to go into the pan is I just like to take the wings here, tuck them under. Ah. This helps it sit up in the pan a little bit better so you get an, a more even roast. I like to take several lemons, just slice them. Again, not fancy. These are going to be discarded, but I, I like to stuff them inside the cavity uh, for flavor. Uh, the stuffing, which we're going to do in a little while here, um, I like to do that outside for food safety reasons. Um, stuffing it in here and then the long cooking process, uh, if it's not done correctly, uh, can really build up some bad bacteria in there. And, and I also like to uh, get these legs um, tucked together. Now, do you tie them with twine or do you have yep. a string? You can, use a, you can use some string. The reason for this is uh, you want a nice tight package. There we go. Um, trim off a little excess. So does it cook more evenly this exactly, way? Exactly, exactly. Nice tight package, nice tight turkey, so that way everything will cook on an even uh, process. Now we're gonna get this in the, in the oven. Uh, we could use a little salt and pepper on, on the outside of the skin, if you like, uh, for seasoning. Um, but since we're trying to reduce our sodium intake, we'll go without that. It's not really gonna affect anything because uh, we had it soaking in the brine, so we got lots of flavor already built in there. Uh, now it's ready to go in a, a 350 degree oven uh, for, again, 15 to 20 minutes per pound. Uh. And again, that's just a rough estimate to 15 to 20 minutes. You wanna make sure you have an internal cooking temperature of 165 degrees. All right, Pete, Lisa, now the turkey's in the oven, we've gotten through that process. Why don't we get going on the stuffing? All right, the stuffing. Uh, we're gonna do a multi-grain stuffing. Uh, we did it with uh, multi-grain bread that we toasted. Uh, we cut it up into cubes, and then uh, we threw it in the oven, toasted it off till it's a nice brown and dry. Uh, we made our own homemade stock, which is low in sodium. So what we did is we sauteed up uh, a half a cup of onion, celery, and carrot. We're just gonna throw that in. Uh, we also diced up a few fresh herbs. We did uh, rosemary and thyme for this. Uh, you can use uh, different herbs, whatever you prefer. A sage is a, is a great favorite one for Thanksgiving, uh, but today we're just using rosemary and thyme. So Pete, on the bread for the stuffing, if you have gluten intolerance, are there alternatives to make stuffing? Uh, yes, you can use any of the gluten-free breads that are available. Uh, the biggest part of it is you just want to have a device to sop up all the juices and liquids and get the flavor from the uh, mix that you put in. So any bread you use, as long as you have the right texture to it, you'll be fine. Great. So then we're going to add the bread. You're going to want to do this in steps too, just to make sure you don't have an over dry or an over wet stuffing. Uh, we put about, it's about a half a loaf of bread we cut up and toasted. Uh, we're going to start with a little over a cup just to get going. Uh, this is where it gets fun. I like to mix it with my hands. Uh, you're going to want to toss that to really incorporate it. It'd be a good step for the kids, too, to jump in there. <laughs> Great step for the kids. It gets them in the kitchen, too, to really enjoy the Thanksgiving traditions that you're starting with these healthy recipes. The seasonings that you use, that's basically taking the place of flavorings versus having it cooked inside the turkey. Is that right? That is correct. One of the things you do when you stuff inside of a turkey is you're absorbing all the fat and juices that come out of the turkey itself and it makes a nice side dish. Uh, but what we're doing here is one, we're making it safer by cooking it outside of the bird, and two, we're making it a little less fatty and a lot less sodium. So uh, I didn't realize that much fat came out of the turkey when you're cooking inside of it. Yeah, there is a tremendous amount that does come from the bird itself. So you want uh, a somewhat dry texture, a little bit of wetness to it, and that's all you're really looking for right there. So uh, you just put it right into a pan, spread it out evenly, and it's ready to bake. It's that simple. How long do we pick, bake the stuffing? Uh, the stuffing will take in between, uh, thank you Dave, uh, 350 degree oven between half an hour, 45 minutes, depending upon the size of the pan you use. For this recipe that we have here, it'll take about a half an hour. So I know you should let a turkey sit when you take it out of the oven, like 15 minutes or so? Uh, I usually wait about a half an hour. So we could put the stuffing in as the bird comes out? Exactly. That'd that be makes great, great timing. timing. 
All right, now that the turkey's out of the oven for a while, it's all rested and ready to go, uh, let's talk about carving it. A couple little inside pointers. I first like to start with the legs. Move the wing out of my way. Uh, you see I have a carving fork as well. So you don't remove the wing and drumstick, you're just cutting through? So I'm just going to cut down right on the side in between the leg and the breast. Right here. Right, and I'm going to make a small incision at the bottom of the breast. So that way when you start slicing down like this, you get a nice complete slice right off the breast. Very nice. And you just keep on making the incisions right down. The, you don't have to fight with it at the bottom. It comes that that small incision right down there is the is the biggest trick. This looks fantastic, and the really good thing about eating healthy and eating well is it's all about portion control. You can eat anything on Thanksgiving. You can have a delicious serving of stuffing, your turkey, vegetables, potatoes, even some gravy. You want to keep your portions under control and then that way you can enjoy your day, you don't have to sacrifice, and you feel good the next day. Good consistency. Mm. The fresh herbs make all the difference. They really do. Excellent. All right, everybody, have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Dave, Pete, and Lisa. It's hard to believe it's almost that time of year again. It's the time of year we begin to think of the hustle and bustle of the holiday season. We're faced with a lot of excitement and generally more stress. So this year, how can you be best prepared to deal with the holidays in a positive and proactive way? First, it's important to be realistic and kind to yourself with the understanding that the holidays are hectic and can make you deviate from your usual routine. Approaching the holidays with this mindset can make it easier and more manageable. I have some suggestions that will help you this holiday season. First of all, be realistic. Don't try to lose weight during the holidays. A more realistic goal is to maintain your current weight. Work time into your busy schedule for exercise. Even if you can't adhere to your usual routine completely, consider taking walks with family and friends before or after a holiday meal. The more you can maintain a regular exercise regime, the more you will be able to cope with the added stress and enjoy the holidays. Don't skip meals. Make sure you don't go to a holiday party famished because this will make you more tempted to overindulge. Instead, have a small snack before you go out to help you curb your appetite. Survey the holiday buffet before you fill your plate. Choose your favorite foods and skip those that are least favorite. Make sure to add plenty of fruits and vegetables to your choices. Eat until you're satisfied, not until you're stuffed. Savor small portions of your favorite foods. Sit down, get comfortable, and enjoy the spirit of the holidays. Watch your consumption of beverages. Both alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages can add a lot of calories and sugar very quickly. Alcoholic beverages can also lessen inhibitions and induce overeating. If you do overeat at one meal, go light on the next. Remember, it's impossible to gain weight from just one piece of pie. Take the focus off of food. Turn candy and cookie making into not edible projects like making wreaths or building a gingerbread house. Plan activities with family and friends that aren't always all about food. Offer to bring your own healthy holiday dish to the party. Practice healthy holiday cooking. You can modify your favorite dishes to be lower in fat and calories than traditional recipes. And most of all, enjoy the holidays. Plan time for activity, incorporate healthy choices into your holiday meals, and don't over-restrict yourself from enjoying your favorite holiday foods. Make sure to get plenty of rest and you'll be sure to go into the new year feeling much better.